Hello, my name is Cristina Poggi. I've been a breastfeed cafe for 20 years. I've been dealing with the training and education in mammography for 11 years. This is the fourth and last lesson of a series about artifacts in digital mammography. I'm preparing other lectures anyway. Today, as usual, I'm going to show lots of images and food drawings too. The subject we are to talk today is extension and rotation mistakes in mammography positioning for MLA projection, making a link between the mistakes and the quality criteria. The extension the tissue acquired is the most important quality criterion in mammography. As reported by this paper written by a group of our colleagues in 2017 on radiography, without all breast tissue included on a mammogram or not optimally visualized, all other aspects of quality are not relevant, as I told you in the last lesson. There are two principal clinical quality assessment systems in mammography clinical quality, which depends highly on radiographer's performance. They are qualitative systems, scarcely reproducible, despite the many attempts to standardize them all over the world. These are the clinical quality criteria for MLA projection, some are rising, some of them are in common with CC, and we had already been through them in the third video. Look now at the ones outlined in orange. But important for MLO projection is the documentation of the petrolized myel muscle. It should be very extensive in length until the PNL, at least, which is this line perpendicular to this other that connects the anterior superior angle to the inferior one of the pectoralis myel. From the nipple to the anterior border of the muscle itself, it should be wide at the axillary level, a convex, because so the real anatomy is. It is anyway asserted also straight. Very important is the documentation of IMF as well, open and free of artifacts. Actually, it is not the IMF in itself to be important. The probability to find lesions in this location is very low. It is much higher in this portion, the posterior inferior quadrant, just above and in front of IMF, and you could see it only when the IMF is present, and you don't see it on CC projection. Quality criteria for MLO are easier to meet respect to those of a CC view. For a given competence and experience, getting pictorial smile to PNL could be done in more than 80% of cases, as the literature reports. Getting the correct width at axillary tail depends also on patient compliance. The pictorial shape depends very much on patient's degree of relaxation or on her joint pathologies. Regarding IMF, there are some patient's anatomical parameters to be considered. You can see here why to show pictorialis myo to and beyond PNL is crucial. It certifies rich mammary space had been obtained as much as possible, and the probability to find lesions in this site is high. In this example, there is not enough muscle in length, and so no rich mammary space, even in CCs, and it is unacceptable. This is the muscle with light to have in every MLO projection. The shape is convex, very wide axillary level. There is the latissimo dorsi behind. It shows the triangle more radio-opaque than the pectoralis, wide and well stretched in the central part, and in the field part too, which presents itself with a rounded tail. This is the anatomical correspondence in the drawing. It is not always achievable, on the contrary. We have to consider that the positioning technique is to be adjusted and tailored for every single patient, depending on her anatomy and compliance. To obtain a wide muscle at axillary level is important, as we said, because the radiologist can so study the complete armpit. But it shouldn't come at the expense of inferior tissue documentation, as in these examples. 
This happens when the passion is made to bend down towards the detector. Hips go backwards naturally, and you lose the IMF, the posterior field quadrant, and sometimes even the middle deep tissue, too, as you can see. And it is unacceptable. Shape, length and width of picturized Maya depend on absent joint pathologies on the patient's anatomy and compliance. If the patient tenses up, stiffens as a result on the image, you can see a rectilinear, concave shape and sometimes big deep folds. Or a chicken like artifact like that, but I already talked about that in a previous lesson. In the last image, the patient had a omerous fracture not well healed. With regard to position of femoral projection, according to the method I teach, the patient doesn't face the mammography unit, but she is turned medially from the best to be imaged 45 degrees to the detector. I guide her towards the detector without rotation or having her bending down. To obtain the correct pictorialis my width and when it's possible latissimus dorsi too, we radiographers have to hold the patient's arm and perform a superior and anterior inner rotation. This maneuver include deep axillary tissue checking point, the superior in angle of the detector, this one in a green circle, should be free. All the superior deep tissue will be on the detector and shown on the image. As you can see on this drawing, the anterior wall of armpit is made by petrolized myo and minor 2, but you can't see it in mammography. The posterior wall is made actually by many muscles, but the only one visible, and not always, is the latissimus dorsi. To show properly pictorialized Maya in shape, width and length, you should pay attention to the geometry of acquisition, which demands parallelism between medial and lateral breast aspects. Generally, this leads to the condition of the nipple profile. In such a case, knowing that the nipple points to the missing tissue and the nipple is medial, we can infer to have lost medial deep tissue. Width and length are not necessarily correlated to a proper positioning. In the first image, there is a rotation, but you have more muscle than in the second one, which is properly acquired. Should the rotation be medial, in the first example, a very important portion of deep lateral tissue was shown, but the medial deep tissue was lost, where a lesion was found, here magnified, completely lost in the first image. Petralis Maya and IMF documentation depends on the given competence and experience of the radiographer on many factors all related to each other. Breast base width on the chest wall, breast volume, breast base ratio, degree of ptosis, which indicates how easy it is to pull away the breast from the thorax, breast consistency, namely how much the breast is manipulatable. And the poster conditions, too, there are huge differences between one breast and the other. Represented here, the footprint in green, the volume of corneus in yellow, and the skin envelope in pink. From an idea by Dr. Philip Blondil, an international leading expert on aesthetic breast surgery, I reckon the all three parameters have a deep impact on the quality of images we radiographers can produce. That's why I decided to include them in the positioning method I teach. Cases like this one with a very wide base wide base on the chest wall, either in superior, inferior direction and in medial lateral direction too, makes a very difficult to show deep planes in general and the IMF as well. These are breasts characterized by very low mobility and very high consistency, even difficult to be compressed properly. 
On the contrary, breasts like this one are high mobile and of low consistency, very manipulatable, actually too much. It's easy to create faults while positioning and compressing. With regard to IMF documentation for a position of the patient at 45 degree, we have to make the patient's hips rotate laterally towards the detection and forwards. To open the IMF is important to perform properly the up and out maneuver and correct vertical folds in the way we had already talked about in the second lesson. If you like, the link is here at the end of this one. The thing that makes this job amazing and in the same time that can explain the reason why it's so difficult is the fact that there is an extreme difference between breasts and between patients, so we have to tailor our approach for every single patient and I'm not talking just about anatomy. Another factor to pay attention to is the centering of the breast relative to the field of view. As we know, nowadays the entire detector works as a photo sign sensor, so we have to decide which compressor paddle is to be used depending on the breast dimension and which position the patient should occupy with respect to the detector superior and inferior. In order to obtain on the image an adequate amount of auxiliary tail and of IMF, the right proportion of those drawn here. Two fingers for the inferior parts are enough, all the superior parts of the field of view should be used for superior tissues. Here you see inferior profile the breast cut off, so of course the IMF. Here the compressor paddle is of the wrong dimension. And here is the axillary part to be cut off. We have to know what a good mammography like. This allows us to recognize a poor quality mammography, especially with regard to extension, stretching and flattening of the tissue acquired. As usual, these are some papers I found interesting on the uh, subject we have dealt with today. These are the links to my uh, previous lessons about the artifacts in digital mammography, but we actually talked about a lot more than that. Thanks for your attention, waiting for your suggestions and questions if you like, this is my mail. Bid you farewell, hope you have enjoyed, till the next time. Bye!